Hello and welcome back to another Amber Roots devlog. I've been debating what to do next, and I think the biggest thing I want to do right now is make combat more functional. Meaning, I want attacks to actually have an impact on every creature's health, and I want to be able to decide win or lose conditions for combat based on who is or isn't knocked out. So I'm just going to get started with that, and we'll catch up in a bit. Alright, so I think I've made a decent amount of progress with this, so let's take a look. So first I'm going to enter combat with a couple of creatures that don't have any kind of special abilities or stat boost to their health. I'm going to attack the enemies like normal, but once the enemies get their turn, we'll see that the health on my creatures is decreasing based on their attacks. As the combat progresses and my monsters are outmatched, my monsters will start getting knocked out when their health reaches zero. I'm going to continue attacking and see if I can knock out a couple of the enemy monsters. There we go. But there's no way I'm going to win this fight, so we'll just keep doing this and we'll wait to see what happens when all of my monsters are knocked out. The main issue here is that the mushroom monsters have a higher starting health than the other ones, and so there's really no way I was going to win that. And there we go, when all of my monsters are knocked out, I get a defeat screen and this will hold information later. And I can hit OK and take an out of combat. Right now my monsters are fully healed and revived after combat, but in the future that's something you'll have to take care of yourself. So now let's take a look at what happens when my monsters actually have some abilities and are able to win that fight. Alright, so once again we're going to enter the fight, and this time it's at night. And here we go. So now my monsters have much higher health, and I've got moves that are much more powerful than the standard attack. So this should be pretty easy. The first one can be knocked out with a single powerful attack, and the attacks do different damage, but none of it's really balanced or super thought out right now. I just put in those damage numbers to have variety during the attacks. But we should be able to make pretty quick work of these guys. Right now all the attacks are doing the same amount of damage every time they're used. That's also something I want to change in the future, especially when I'll be taking into account things like resistances and weaknesses against certain types of elements. And there we go, we've got it. This is the victory screen, where you would see sort of your rewards for the battle. And once again, just like the other screen, if we hit OK, it takes us out of combat, and we're back to the ranch. I'm really happy with this, and although combat still has a long way to go in order to be fun, and engaging, getting the functionality down so that you can actually complete combat was a pretty big deal. Moving forward, I could start working on things like actually having wild battles with monsters you encounter. But for right now, the next thing I want to work on is getting the species ability trees working. In the last devlog, we were able to get the universal ability trees working fairly well, but I also need to get the species ability trees working, and those are going to be a bit more complicated. I'm going to get to work on that now, and I'll catch up in a bit. Alright, so after spending some time working on this, I think I've got a pretty good system going. So now I've got a new tab for the species ability trees here. The icon on the tab is right now just taking in the icon of the monster that you currently got selected. The only issue with this really is that since the monster sprites are of different sizes, and this is sort of squishing them into being in a button, the pixel sizes on this are off. In the future, I'm hoping to have maybe menu sprites for each monster that are all the same size as the other sprites on the UI, so that this doesn't happen. But when you click on this button, it takes you to the species ability tree, and here each monster species will have its own unique set of moves. I put in a few abilities for the lizard species and the penguin species here, and if I switch monsters you can see that although the warrior and the mage trees stay the same, the species ability tree changes. So this is working exactly as intended. In the future, these species ability trees will have each monster's transformations there as well. 
but I need to come up with the system for actually transforming the monsters first. Also, at some point soon, I really need to make some more ability icons because I kind of ran out and I'm reusing a lot of them in places that don't really make a lot of sense. I'm pretty happy with how the functionality has turned out with the species ability trees, so I'm going to show you a little bit of how I set it all up. Most of the functionality is happening between two scripts, the monster skill UI manager script and the monster ability tree script. The monster ability tree script is one that is attached to all monster ability trees, whether they are a species tree or not. And the way it works is that when I make an ability tree, I set it up with the abilities and such, and I have the option to put in a parent species. For the universal ability trees, like the warrior and the mage, that is just left blank. So it's only a piece that's used when talking about the species ability trees. So if we hop over to the monster skill UI manager, what I have, which is what I had before, is an array of monster ability trees. And this just finds everything with the monster ability tree script attached to it and adds it to that array. But now I also have a dictionary of species ability trees. And this dictionary takes in a monster parent species as a key and outputs an ability tree as a value. When I set it up, it basically looks for all of the ability trees in that previously mentioned array. And if it has a parent species data, then it adds it to the dictionary with that as the key. Then when I'm in the skills and abilities menu, it checks the currently selected monster for its parent species, finds the respective species ability tree, and outputs it into that tab. So far this is working really well, and I think it's a pretty clean solution to having a tree that changes from monster to monster. The last thing that I want to bring up in this devlog is that I've decided it's finally time for me to start looking into source control. I've put it off for just far too long, and even though I experimented with it in the past, I never really set it up properly. I've just been making backups of my project in all sorts of different ways, trying to make sure that I can keep it safe. But what I really need to do is start looking into source control. I'm looking at GitHub because I've heard of it before and I know it's a big one, and I know it's got some sort of built-in functionality with Unity, so I thought it was a good one to look at first. So this is what I've been doing for a little while and what I'll probably be doing for a little while. Not super interesting and it's part of the reason why this video is so much shorter than the other devlogs. But it needs to get done, it's just not super exciting to watch. After I hopefully get all the source control with GitHub working properly, my plan is to do a little bit of work with the AI, which I am just super excited about. That way I can start turning combat into something a little bit more interesting where you're encountering wild monsters that maybe chase you down and attack you. So I'm very much looking forward to that. But until then, thank you so much as always for watching these videos. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. And if you want to see more of these videos, consider subscribing. And I hope you'll join me again next time. Thanks again for watching.